Hello everybody. Today we are here with Tami, who is a professional dropshipper from China. We will have today a very special interview and very, very, very interesting interview about how to find the good suppliers and a good products from AliExpress when you dropship to eBay. Hey Tami, how are you? Good, how are you? I am fine. Great to have you here today with us. Uh, I would like to ask you uh, about yourself. Tell us a bit about yourself. Okay. Hi, guys. My name is Tammy. Uh, I've been, I'm 34 years old. I'm married and I have a three-year-old kid. I'm a mother. I've been dropshipping on eBay since 2012. Uh, since then, um, uh, it developed into other areas uh, like Amazon and Etsy. Etsy came before Amazon, actually. And then Shopify, last year I opened up my first uh, Shopify store. And uh, right this last month I opened up my second Shopify store. Cool. So you are dropship for around seven years on eBay. That's correct. Right? Nice. Uh, how did you get to the dropshipping? How did you start this uh, business? Um, this business, this idea of um, selling on eBay, actually, I was living for a while in the United States, and this idea came to me one day uh, in 2008. Uh, a friend of my cousin's took some hair straighteners and started selling them on eBay, and he made a really good profit on them. And um, I was going back and forth if I should do this or not, and if it's something that I, I can do, or how, how do I even start doing this? And in 2012, um, me and then fiance, now my husband, we were in a bad situation money-wise. Um, we were, I was working three jobs. He just started a new job and I was going to school. I was a, a medical science student. Uh, and I just decided one day that I'm going to do this. I'm going to start researching. I'm going to dive into this. So for about two months straight, I sat on my computer and did some research. And uh, in the beginning, I started, um, wholesaling, uh, Drop shipping wasn't even, um, not that I knew um, of back then, wasn't even uh, an idea back then. It, w it didn't really have, have a name. Uh, so I started wholesaling. I started um, ordering products from Chinese websites into my house and also from eBay into my house. And I started selling them on eBay or on Etsy. So that's how it started. It started the ball rolling. Cool. So you started first with American suppliers? No, actually from Chinese suppliers. I started from suppliers from iOffer, if you ever heard about that. Ah, so you started immediately from uh, Chinese dropshipping? Yes. My beginning cool. was from Chinese dropshipping. The other way around from what most people are used to nowadays. Yeah, usually people start from American suppliers and then they go to the Chinese suppliers. Uh, cool. By the way, I also started my dropshipping from Chinese suppliers from uh, Deal Extreme and uh, Tiny Deal. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Those are good websites. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so in this interview, as I said, we will uh, uh, focus on how you find a good supplier. So what is a good Chinese supplier for you in uh, general? Uh, a good Chinese supplier is a reliable Chinese supplier, someone that I can build business relationship relationships with long-term business relationships with uh, not someone that I'll call uh, that can only provide me of a winning product but several winning products so we are searching usually for suppliers where, who has more than one uh, product you, they have multiple uh, good products but what also important for you things like communication items quality Item quality is extremely important for me. Um, I'm a perfectionist in everything that I do, uh, which that can be um, a downfall for a lot of people also for me because be, it, nothing can never be perfect. But um, 
searching out good suppliers is very important for me. Searching out uh, good products, it's, it's extremely important because it, when your customer receives the product and it's not good, it's reflected upon you and on your store. So you have to think about this from the beginning and provide a good quality product. I understand. Now, if I want to start from scratch searching for a good supplier, I don't have any supplier for now, how can I start uh, to do this process? How, how do you start to search the suppliers? Um, let's say if you're going to AliExpress, I can show you. Can I do a, uh, I'm going to do a screen share with you. Okay. The initial process starts, just one second. Okay, so do you see my screen? Yeah. Good. So this is basically the front page of AliExpress. Uh, I start my uh, supplier research with, um, with everything, just with the basics, just elimination process. Let's say I'm gonna go into consumer electronics and chargers for an example. When I come here, I have 230,000 different results. That's a lot. That, that can give someone a headache, and um, it's not easy to start um, a, eliminating uh, all of these uh, products from the, from the good ones and from the not-so-good ones. So basically, the initial uh, elimination process starts with checking this box here, four stars and up. And then you can basically go down here and see if there is other things that are more important for you. If free shipping is important for you, uh, it's not always important for me because if I find a good product, I can calculate the shipping costs into the price and everything is workable, everything is uh, fixable. But if free shipping is important for you, you check the box for free shipping. And now you're down to 4,000 and 800 and something uh, products. Uh, you've eliminated around 90% of the products you had in your search results. So then you go to uh, best match, orders, newest. My suggestion is go through orders to see which product has more orders, and then you start taking a look at the product itself. This one has seven, around 7,000 order, uh, around, excuse me, 13,000 orders. That's a lot. And 7,000 uh, feedbacks. This is a top brand store. And you can go into this uh, product and start um, evaluating the supplier. What do you check when you're evaluating the supplier? What is important for you here? Uh, okay, the first thing that I check for is uh, the how long is the store been open? It's uh, crucial for me at least, and this is my recommendation, to stick with suppliers and stores that have been open for more than one year. Uh, this you have here four years, so it's good. Over here, you got the top brand mark. It's really, it's not that easy to receive this top brand mark on AliExpress. So when you see the top brand mark, you lean into trusting the supplier, that it's a reliable supplier, it's a good supplier. Over here, you have the positive feedback. It's 98.5%, uh, which is really good. And over here, you have um, a... A, a breakdown of uh, how this feedback is built, it, item is described, communications, shipping speed, and this is all from uh, all the feedbacks that this store has gotten, not just for this product, but for the entire store. Well, so what is the minimum number of uh, feedbacks? What is the minimum percentage which uh, you are working with? Uh, the minimum percentage, I try not to go under 96%. Sometimes I will go to 95%. But again, it's, um, it, 
when you evaluate the supplier, it, it, there's no such thing as a perfect supplier. Uh, and if the, if the product is hot enough and the seller is selling them in a good price, then I will go to 95%, but not lower than 95%. I tend to stay around 96%. So actually what, what is important for you is the general, is, is the full uh, things, not, not only the specific feedbacks or something like this. You check the many param parameters, right? Yes, actually the specific feedbacks on the, on the product itself, it's very important for me. Over here we see that we have around 7,000 feedbacks and the feedback score is 4.9. We don't see, uh, oh, we do, there are 40 feedbacks that are one star. Uh, mainly what I'm going to do is check the, the lower ratings uh, more than the higher ratings because the higher ratings are, we, we all know what we're going to, what we're going to read on the higher ratings. But what is most important for me is to check if there is a problem reported about the supplier's behavior. If the item was shipped on time, received, um, received on time, was the item damaged or not, uh, and overall feedback about the product. When you take a look at the negative feedback and stay longer on the negative feedback, it gives you a better idea about the supplier and the product you're evaluating. Cool. So you are checking both the supplier and also the specific product. Of course, yes. <laughs> But the first par parameter is the supplier, so you're first finding the supplier and after that you're going over his products? It can go both ways, actually. I can, uh, I can source out a hot item or a hot niche and according to that, look for suppliers or I can uh, find a good supplier and find his uh, best-selling items and you can always, you can always, like, if you have a product here that is sold for, uh, this is, in my opinion, an oversaturated product. But uh, when you see around 13,000 orders from one product, you know that it's a product that it's going to sell no matter what. You just have to uh, be an individual somehow to differentiate yourself from the other sellers. Nice, it's very important. I see that uh, this product has many variations. Would yes. you upload all these variations or only the specific one? I will upload all of them and I always recommend if you have the possibility to work with variation listings on eBay, work with variation listings on eBay because eBay promotes vari uh, variation listings more uh, than uh, single item listings. It just shows that it's a professionally done listing. Yeah, because it shows like uh, you spend more time on this listing than uh, exactly. any other. Cool. Do you use any tools to find the good suppliers or the good uh, products? Yes, one of the uh, tools that I use to uh, further assess my suppliers is actually a, a Chrome extension called Ali Tools. This is here over here. And as you can see, it can give you uh, a lot of uh, insight into uh, also price-wise. You can see price fluctuations over time. Over here, you see this is from November 2nd. This was this price. Over here on November 11th, the price jumped down. So when you're trying to um, cut deals with the suppliers, this gives you a really good indication of what, is the, what the supplier can offer you and what is your margin of deal making with the supplier. Sometimes you'll even get better deals than what you see shown here on Ali Tools, but still it, it gives you a ballpark of what you can uh, get from your supplier. So well, you would request from the supplier the, the lower price, right? Yes. You're just contacting the supplier and requesting the other price? Um, I always contact my suppliers because I love building trust levels with my suppliers. Um, I'm new to them, they're new to me. 
And how you build trust levels and long-term business relationships is actually communicating with one another. And communication with uh, AliExpress suppliers or Chinese suppliers in general, it's crucial because not all of them have um, good English skills. Uh, sometimes they don't um, answer you on time. If you ask a question if it, and it takes the supplier two or three days to reply back to you, then you see that that supplier is not uh, very serious with his uh, business. And you just don't have to waste your time with a supplier that doesn't take you seriously and doesn't take his business seriously. You just move on to a different supplier. Um, also, when you build a rapport with a supplier, you can get better deals from the supplier. And when you have deals with the suppliers, prices don't change for you. On AliExpress, prices can change uh, like any other websites. And when you have deals with your suppliers, you don't have to worry about price fluctuations. Well, so you, you would uh, check first the English and the response time of the suppliers. Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, so after you uh, communicate with your suppliers, you continue the communication on AliExpress or you're using other tools like uh, WeChat or something like this? I always take my suppliers off of the AliExpress message board because uh, first of all, AliExpress monitors everything and uh, just like any other website and um, you're less free to communicate with your supplier. Also the comfort level of not being always on the AliExpress message board, it's, uh, take, take them off of the AliExpress message board. It's, it's more comfortable and it helps build trust levels with the supplier. So which uh, communication uh, application do you use? Uh, I use a lot of WeChat. WeChat is uh, the WhatsApp alternative for China. Uh, there is uh, some issues with WhatsApp and it, not all suppliers have WhatsApp. I use Skype a lot, uh, mm -hmm. but mostly WeChat, WhatsApp and Skype. Yes. Cool. Just for the people, WhatsApp is blocked actually in China. Uh, Chinese people need to do some tricks to get the WhatsApp uh, working there. So this is why most of Chinese suppliers will work with uh, WeChat. Actually, WeChat is everything in China. It's not only... Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, does the niche important for you? There is there are any niches which you will not work with them? Uh, the niche is not that important for me as long as um, it's a good niche and you have enough products and the supplier has enough products you can sell. Uh, let's say this supplier, how many products does he have? Let's see, products. He has 771 items. Uh, most of these are, um, well, this is something that I will actually avoid. This is batteries. I wouldn't suggest working with batteries because shipping-wise, it can be complicated. But um, with niches, um, I, don't, I don't stick into a certain niche. I don't um, involve emotion into this. I mean, whatever sells, sells. But I would try to avoid niche. I would try to avoid products like um, prohibited items on eBay, like weapons, uh, firearms. Um, I use. I I myself don't uh, do sex toys. A lot of people do. Uh, but yeah, those are the things. I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't also use. I wouldn't also sell any breakable items from uh, that are going to be shipped from. Uh, long-term shipping like uh, glass uh, glass or let's say tv screens things that are breakable and can be damaged during shipping those are things that i would usually recommend to avoid but there are um ways to also work with suppliers that sell those items if it's a supplier that has been working with those items for a very, very long time and he knows how to package those items really good and you don't see any 
uh, prior indication of problem with those items, then you can work with those items also. Amazing, cool. So there is any uh, maximum price uh, which you will uh, not work after this price? No. No? Okay. The sky is cool. the limit. I have items for two or three thousand dollars. From AliExpress. From AliExpress. Cool. Amazing. Uh, by the way, for uh, uh, people who don't know, you can uh, block keywords like batteries or things like this in AutoDS in the settings page. So this can uh, help you to avoid these uh, situations which uh, uh, Tammy said. Um, I saw on the previous page, by the way, here also, if someone wants to upload the products, the whole, all the products of the supplier, you can use the extension in the bottom. Uh, and I have it, um, it's very helpful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I saw that uh, you are using the extension to see if the product has uh, e packet. Yes. Uh, can you explain about this a bit? What is e packet and why do you use it? Yes. Uh, e packet is a form of shipping from China to around 30 countries around the world, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's a fast uh, ship. It's a fast shipping form that provides you end-to-end -end tracking information, uh, uh, and it's something that um, you have to take into consideration when you're working with uh, eBay because if uh, if you do provide a tracking number, but sometimes the tracking number when you work with um, Chinese suppliers. Uh, they only provide tracking information up until the item leaves China, but it doesn't provide uh, inform tracking information in the destination country. Um, so when you work with ePacket, you don't have that issue because you have end-to-end -end tracking information. Cool. Do you work only with ePacket or you can also work with other shipping methods? I don't work solely with the e packet because um, other shipping uh, methods can provide the same uh, results of end to end tracking numbers. Like uh, China Post registered airmail, they might take a bit longer delivery wise because e packet is the fastest nowadays. But uh, I don't confine myself only into e packet, but I do. Uh, recommend if you have the option to choose ePacket over other uh, shipping methods. Cool. I also prefer ePacket this way. In uh, AutoDS, we usually take, we always take the ePacket price uh, in the price calculation uh, automatically. So if you see the ePacket, you don't need to add the price, uh, it will be calculated automatically. I'm just saying it because after this, the questions will come to our support. So I prefer to uh, say it here. <laughs> You're troubleshooting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, amazing. Uh, do, do you mentor people? You're teaching people for uh, all the things you know in AliExpress? Yes, actually, I do mentor people. I don't take on, take on too many students uh, at a time. I try to take on only like five or six students per month or uh, because time-wise, <laughs> I do so many things. Uh, it's, it's, but I do try to, to mentor. I do business consulting and I do a lot of uh, strategic consulting. Cool. So actually your main focus is the dropshipping, but sometimes you're just taking few people to help them. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Do you have any additional tips about uh, uh, choosing suppliers, about uploads? By the way, do you work with uh, manual uploads or do you work with uh, bulk uploads? I do a lot of bulk uh, because when I find a good supplier and I, I've checked out his store and I've checked out his product and I see that about 90% of what he's giving uh, on his store is something that I would like to list, I just go into a software and I bulk list everything. It takes me like tops 10 minutes. Okay, cool. So, okay, nice. Uh, do you have anything that you want to add? Maybe? <laughs> oh, 
Also, okay. <laughs> uh, great. So actually, uh, your main focus is first you find the supplier. After that, you're checking his products uh, to, has, uh, to have a, be- a good reviews. Uh, you don't work with suppliers who has uh, less than 95% of feedbacks and you prefer e-packet if it exists and you work with both bulk and manual uploads, but usually you work with bulk uploads. Of course, cool. it's so much easier. <laughs> right, and when you upload with bulk, you upload it with all the variations of the product? Of course, of course. You, I mean, variations, like I mentioned, uh, it's it's highly sought out and uh, not a lot of um, sellers, not a lot of stores use bulk uh, uh, variation listings on eBay. So first of all, in the eyes of the, car, of the, of the potential buyer, you're different, you stand out, you, your, listing, your listing looks much better. And, and in the eyes of eBay also, you get promoted more because um, you are more professional in the eyes of eBay because it takes so much time and effort to build a variation listing that you're considered to be more professional. Cool, well, cool. So how people can contact you? Uh, actually, I think we will just put your details here under the uh, video. We also did a very, very, very interesting article with uh, Temi in uh, our uh, blog. So we can read this also under this video. And uh, actually, thank you very much for all this information, Tammy. It was very, very, very interesting, and I'm sure that it will help to many people. My pleasure. And I had a lot, a lot of fun writing the article. <laughs> thank you. We also had a lot of fun to work with you on this. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.